Hey everybody, what's up? It's Justin Sisk here, making another video for you guys. Now I'm sure everybody is familiar with the new horror movie that has now come out by James Wan called The Conjuring 2. I have not had the pleasure of going and seeing that movie yet, however it is on my list of things to do in the next week or so. But I do know about the case that inspired the movie. That case, of course, being one of the most infamous cases in all of the paranormal community, the Enfield Poltergeist. Now, I'm making this video today to explain what the Enfield Poltergeist was, talk about what it was, what happened, who was involved with it, and why it was so prevalent that it inspired a feature film. So without further ado, here is the Enfield Poltergeist. It happened between the years of 1977 and 1979 to a family who was living in Brimsdown Enfield in North London. The mother of this family, a recently divorced woman by the name of Peggy Hodgson, and her four children, Margaret, Janet, Billy, and Johnny, all lived in the home that would later be claimed by the infamous Enfield Poltergeist. Now when the family moved in, the two daughters, Margaret and Janet, started playing around with, yep, a Ouija board. This is what researchers believed was the reason for the poltergeist or the entity entering the home. First, it started off as small things. Things started disappearing. But over time, it got worse. One of these occasions being both of the daughter's beds shaking uncontrollably by themselves. The mother, of course, rushed up to help, and then the dresser was then pushed in front of the door, trapping them in the room. After this happened, they called the police. The police actually came in, did a full-scale investigation, looking for any signs of trickery or laws that have been broken, and of course they found nothing. One of the police officers actually reported seeing a chair moving across the floor on its own. She looked for any signs of trickery or wires or anything else that could have explained it away and found, yet again, nothing. So the cops had to abandon the case. As time went on, it started getting worse. They started hearing disembodied voices, dogs barking, chairs and tables were arranged in odd manners. Things, of course, still went disappearing. Rocks and other things were thrown in the windows into the home. And even some of the furniture and the children were being levitated off of the ground. These all, of course, are common instances that follow a poltergeist haunting. But what is a poltergeist? Poltergeist, of course, is a German word, and it means noisy or loud ghost. And that's what people used to think it was. It was just this powerful spirit that was able to manipulate its surroundings. Over time, people have come to believe that a poltergeist is actually a concentrated amount of energy from a person's subconscious that is able to manipulate its surroundings. They believe that this person's subconscious releases this energy when, it under, when they undergo a extreme amount of stress, thus giving way to the idea of psychokinetic abilities. No matter what definition you believe of the poltergeist, this is what was happening in the home of the Hodgsons. It underwent a lot of scrutiny and a lot of people didn't think that their house was haunted. However, two men from the Society of Physical Research, those men of course being Maurice Gross and Guy Lyon Playfair, came in and investigated the house because they believed that it was genuinely haunted. And of course they found the same findings that the family was experiencing. The objects being thrown through the window, the disembodied voices, they even recorded some of these things on tape recorder and camera. However, there still remains one instance that is the most terrifying of all. Come up and smash a window. Yeah, that does. 
Kaj ima na bolje, kaj ima to on? Ovaj, to on. Če smo kaj ima drevo s lepom vojašal, kaj ima to kvar, kaj ima to kvar, kaj ima to kvar, kaj ima to kvar, kaj ima to kvar. The recording that you just heard was the youngest daughter, Janet, speaking. She was 11 years old when this recording took place. How on earth could an 11-year-old girl speak in the voice that you just heard? It was believed that she was possessed on numerous occasions by a spirit that haunted the home. There was a previous owner that died there before the Hodgkinsons moved in. His name was Bill Wilkins, and he possessed her, like I said, on numerous occasions, sometimes even speaking up to four hours in this very voice. And when they did a closer examination, they realized that she wasn't using her vocal cords or normal vocal cords like we would if we were normally talking like this. She was using her false vocal cords. These vocal cords are used when we are about to lose our voice or we have something like strep throat, when we talk in a really raspy voice. Now, if you talk like this consistently for five or so minutes, your throat will become sore. If you talk like this farther, it will actually do permanent damage to your throat and voice. She was talking like this for over four hours at some times with no repercussions after. How is this possible? A lot of people questioned. So many people started to question it that the BBC actually came in with camera crews and documented what happened. Later down the line, of course, Ed Warren caught word of this haunting. He went in and found some of the same discoveries that both Playfar and Gross had found before. However, he didn't think it was a poltergeist. He thought when the girls played with the Ouija board, they let in not one, but six demons into the house. He communicated with these demons on multiple occasions in the book entitled The Demonologist that was written by Gerald Brittle. If you guys have a chance, go check that book out. It's a great book that encompasses the cases and life of Ed and Lorraine Warren. He says in this book that Ed communicated with the spirits and the demons. He took on personas with names such as Zachary, Dick, Johnny, Gutterman, and other things like that, never giving way to their real name. But they did steer clear of any mention of God, a priest, exorcisms, or anything good for that matter. But over the years, people have thought that this entire thing was fate. Of course, there being some scrutiny here and there, one of them being a BBC interview with Margaret and Janet, both joking about the matter of it being haunted. They think that they were joking around and they fabricated the entire thing to get attention. I personally think that it was a combination. I think it was a genuine haunting that first started, and over time, as it got notoriety, the girls and the other children started getting attention. So they started fabricating it a little bit more to get that much more attention. You gotta remember these kids were all under the age of 14. So this is all very exciting when news crews start coming into your home. So like I said, I think it was a combination of both. I think it was a combination of a genuine haunting and a little bit of fabrication here and there, which of course leads to trouble down the road. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you think it was a poltergeist, if it was demons, if it was a combination of a haunting and fabrication, or if you think it was one or the other. Let me know, and as always, if you liked what you saw, hit subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.